Okay, uh, so this time I'm going to talk a little bit about ice. Uh, I have been making my own ice for my fish for as long as I have been doing fish. I don't think, no, I know that I have never used a production eye for any fish that I have made. And uh, that is mainly because I don't really think the production eyes are adequate because a production eye is usually a black pupil painted on the back side of a glass eye. And then you have you paint the iris around it. And, that, and uh, in my opinion, or in my world, a pupil is a hole going into the eye. Uh, so you can see reflections sometimes in the black surface of the production eye, but I want an eye where the, where the pupil is a hole that that collects the light and doesn't release it out again, and that you can see that it widens out inside as a whole if you look really close. And maybe it's, that's nerdy, but that's the way I want it anyway. So uh, <coughs> I, I make my own eyes, and I come up with a few a few ways to do them. But uh, this is what I use for for my production fish. Uh, or the fish that I make for, for other people. Um, there are a few different ways, but I want to show you this, this method of making an eye today. And what I need is, an, I need a lathe to make the base for the eye. And uh, this might look advanced, but you know, there are really cheap lathes that you can buy uh, nowadays uh, and you don't really need a really fancy one but this is what I have today and I use wood dowels or sticks to, to as the base for the for the eyes so this is what I'm going to turn on the lathe and then for the pupil I am going to use a few drills uh, and drill a center hole which is going to become the pupil uh, so that's the way I'm going to do it, uh, and uh, let's let's begin. So what I need is a wooden dowel or stick of uniform thickness with a diameter that's the same as the eye that I want to do. And the first thing I do is to uh, saw out a stick that I can put in the chuck of the lathe and I round one end of it so it fits in the chuck. There are, of course, many ways to make a round stick. Uh, for example, if you don't have a lathe, you can put a piece of wood in the chuck of a drill. You can attach the drill to a bench top some way, and then you can round it with a rasp, as I do here. I just prefer to do it on a lathe because I have a lathe, and it's quick and easy that way. On the internet you will find other ways to uh, make a round owl. I might post a link to a YouTube clip or two showing other ways to do it in the description of this video. To be able to make the pupil hole I need a completely flat end. So I start by sewing off the lathe marks at the end of the piece and then I cut off the little knob that remains of the sewing. Thank you. 
with a lathe it's very easy to make a center hole. If you don't have a lathe you can eyeball a center hole with an ordinary drill. It's not that critical that it ends up exactly in the middle. paint the iris I need a completely smooth surface so I sand the end of the dowel very carefully with fine sandpaper And uh, then I simply cut this end piece off and the first eye base is done. And then I go on drilling and sewing, dividing this piece up in as many eye bases as I can get from it. It's not absolutely necessary to round the back of the eyes, but I like to do it because it makes it easier to position them in the head of the fish at the angle that I want. And this is how I store them. I don't finalize them at this point because uh, I make so many different types of fish and it's an unpractical paint and eye before I know what kind of fish it's going into. So what I do is I, I measure the diameter and the pupil uh, of the eye and then I store them assorted in boxes according to that. Let's have a look at the reference for a little. We can have a look at this picture of an asp eye. I'm making eyes for an asp right now and you can see that the pupil is more or less circular in shape. And uh, that means that I can use this uh, wooden eye base as I made it with the circular hole that the drill bit made. Uh, and just paint on from that. But uh, that's quite uncommon in fish. Actually, most fish have uh, other shapes on the pupil. For example, a trout has a little bit of a point going to the front uh, forward edge of the of the eye, of the iris. And uh, to make that shape, I of course need to adjust the hole here a little, which I will do with a uh, a, bit, a Dremel and a diamond bit. You might think that uh, this won't look like an eye at all because the inside of the hole isn't widening out under the iris and uh, this point that I'm making now it's even sloping outwards so you can see the entire inside surface of it. 
but uh, I will build a cornea over this later on and it will have a convex surface and actually there is going to be a refraction effect in that convex surface which makes the insides of the hole actually disappear totally under the iris and uh, you might remember this because that's simple high school physics And this is how I like to do it when I get to the eyes on a fish. I actually sculpt up the entire eye uh, as I think it looks right according to the reference pictures that I have. Uh, and this is uh, uh, of course a uh, phone carving so there is quite a lot of sculpting on the face. So I really make the eye as I want it in epoxy sculpt uh, and then after that I draw in the pupil just with a lead pencil so that it looks right according to the pictures that I have and then I measure what I need and if I look at this one it seems like I need a 14 millimeter iris this is the iris iris and here you have the sclerotic capsule uh, 14 14 and a half millimeter iris 14 and the pupil should be maybe nine millimeters and to get a nine millimeter pupil I really need a smaller pupil drilled in the in the uh, wood piece that I use for it so because when I build up the globe over it, it that will work like a magnifying glass and the pupil will seem larger so I think uh, uh, what did I say I said nine millimeters I think an eight or 7.5 millimeter pupil will be right for this and become right when when the globe is on so I will make two sets of eyes, one with, with an 8mm uh, pupil uh, drilled in and one with a 7.5mm pupil drilled in and see which one turns out best. And uh, when I'm about to start painting I attach the eyes. Actually I decided to make three pairs of eyes uh, to a plastic jar lid with double stick tape and then I spray them with the silver auto spray. The next step will be painting the inside of the pupil black. And I take ordinary black artist's color. I like golden and uh, water and then I Try to stay inside of the lines. You might think that when this eye is done the pupil will look like a drilled hole because that's what it is but when the eye globe comes on that works as a lens and uh, the refraction of the light will make actually make the pupil hole appear to get wider inside Okay, let that 
dry and repeat the same step once more to get it dead black. So now we're at the point where we are going to start painting the iris. So let's have a look at the reference again. And as you can see from the picture, an Aspi has a general silver color, a brown shade in the upper part of the eye and a silver edge around the pupil. And it has spots. So that's what we are going to try to replicate. This particular painting style is called wet stippling. The brush that I stipple with is a little bit moist and uh, by doing that I create a blotchy uh, structure to the brown area. Uh, it mimics the pigment cells in the eye. I need to repeat this process a number of times to uh, reinforce the brown area and get the shade that I want. If you look once more at the reference picture, you will see that at the bottom of the iris there is a dark field with kind of a bright flash in the middle. To create this, I use a technique that I call painting to water. I first moisten the area that I want to paint with water and then I dab concentrated black paint on it. And the black paint it travels in the water and that creates diffuse edges that makes the thing look natural. And then it's time for the spots. I do some adjustments to the brown field in the upper half of the iris and then it's time for the silver ring around the pupil. For the silver ring I use a kind of finger paste, a silver, thick silver paste that I put on a brush and just dab on the edge of the hole. And the painting needs to be subdued and blended a little, so I take some 
dry pigment powder, pearl powder, ordinary mica powder and dab it on the surface of the iris. And as a final step, I touch up the black in the pupil again, because uh, always when you have used dry pigment powder, some of it will get into the pupil hole. And when the cornea is on, the magnifying effect of that will make it very obvious. This lid fits on a coffee can that is attached to my rotation motor. I'm using rotation to shape the cornea of these eyes. It will be obvious later on how that works. This is a high build polymer called flex coat that you use to cover the wrappings that hold line guides to a fishing rod. I used to build fishing rods earlier in my life and I came up with this idea when I read about someone who made eyes for his bird carvings uh, from wooden dowels. A bird eye is not much more than a black pupil and uh, he painted the end of the dowel black and then he covered it with lacquer. So I thought I could do something similar, but since a fisheye has a quite substantial iris and uh, since I also wanted the pupil to go into the eye, I needed something thicker to cover the eye with. And I also wanted to be able to build up a higher cornea. When you put this stuff on a fishing rod, you put it on quite thickly and then you rotate the rod uh, to keep it from running off. And my thought was that I could use the same rotation to uh, keep enough polymer on the eye so that I could build that high cornea and that I could also shape the cornea with, my, with the rotation. The issue with this stuff is air bubbles. You want to avoid air bubbles because if you get them inside the pupil or in the cornea, they will be very obvious in the finished eye. So to avoid them, there are certain things you can do. First, use a wide container. Uh, use a metal container, not a plastic one. And then when you have mixed equal parts of the base and the hardener, you stir it very slowly. If you look at how I stir this stuff, I never let the uh, toothpick that I stir with leave the, the compound because if it goes up and then down again, it will drag down air. And I stir thoroughly until the two parts have mixed completely and it's clear. When the compound is completely mixed, you let it sit for a while. The air bubbles will rise to the surface and then you blow on them, which will make them pop. When all the air is gone, it's time to start filling the pupil hole. So I had the compound drop by drop with a toothpick, inspecting every drop for air.
Now the pupil starts to fill up and you will get a little bit of a bulge over it. And I think you can already see that uh, the pupil is collecting light so it gets very black. And you also get the impression that the iris is thin and that the pupil is widening out under it. And I keep adding drop by drop until I get such a bulge over the pupil that I can't add anymore uh, if I want it to stay there. Okay, so now this has to harden a bit before I can go on with the rest of the eye. So I put it under something to keep dust away and the rest of the mixed compound goes into the fridge to slow down the hardening. After about an hour I can go on and now I want to cover the rest of the eye, the whole iris with compound, uh, about as thick as I can get it. The stuff has hardened a bit in the fridge so it's actually quite easy to put on a fairly thick layer without having it run off. I still inspect carefully every drop that I add for air bubbles. So when the eyes are covered with the uh, compound, it's time to put them on rotation. And here you can see how my system works. The plastic lid fits on the coffee can and the coffee can goes on the chuck of the rotation motor. It's actually my old rod building rotation motor that I have modified for this. But you can use just about any grill motor or those kind of motors that rotate disco globes which you can buy sometimes fairly cheap the rotation will center the compound on the ice and make them thicker in the middle and thinner towards the edges and you can actually adjust the thickness by leaning the rotating uh, ice either forward to make them thicker or backwards to make them thinner Another thing that you can do to adjust the height of the cornea is to add drops of compound like I do here. To do this it has to be fairly thick and you can use the one you mixed from the beginning. Uh, in that case you will have to have it in the fridge between the sets of adding like this. Or you can mix new compound and let it harden in, in room temperature. Flex coat hardens in about four hours, but I usually keep the rotation going overnight, so I am sure that it is hard set when I take it off the rotation. The end result. I should also add that flex coat has been tested under severe weather conditions, uh, and it doesn't yellow, crack or cloud or anything like that. So it's a pretty permanent eye.